Do you have a glass in front of you right now? Is your glass half empty or is it half full? Just think about that for a moment. Welcome to the Living to Thrive podcast, a podcast for people who want to live a happy, healthy, thriving life. I'm Catherine White, a former teacher turned healthy living advocate. My own health scare helped me to get educated and create my own business so I can help inspire others while being my own boss. I created the Living to Thrive podcast to provide you with tips and tricks, healthy eating and lifestyle options, and inspiration to help you nourish, inspire, and grow your own health. So let's get started. Today, we are talking about the power of positivity. In episode two, I told you a little bit about my story, about how I ended up with cancer and how I managed to navigate those very, very choppy waters. And part of navigating those choppy waters and getting through all of the surgeries and the treatments was to stay positive. Now, I know that may sound like it's, you know, no big thing. It was really hard. It was really, really hard, and I had to dig deep every single day to stay positive and to find a way to make sure that I kept my head on straight and that I got up every single day ready to live, ready to survive, and ready to move forward. So having negative thinking in my life wasn't an option. Now, that doesn't mean that negativity didn't creep in. You can't be positive all of the time. I recognize that. And it can be really hard to be positive when things are not the way that you want them to be or expect them to be. So let's just start with reframing how we think about things. For example, is your glass half empty or is your glass half full? How do you see that? How we see things can make a huge difference in our life. Reframing our thoughts and turning things around can make a really big difference in our brain activity, in our physical well-being, in our stress levels. There's all kinds of things that can be changed in our bodies when we change our thought patterns. One of the best things that we can do for ourselves is to love ourselves a little bit more. To stop the negative self-talk, that negative internal dialogue that many of us are probably shaking our heads and saying, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's almost like we're trained to not speak kindly about ourselves or that we are taught to be so modest or humble that we don't think good things about ourselves. But you know what? You're amazing. We are all amazing. We all have great things about ourselves and we need to learn to cherish and nurture that. So we have to stop the negative self-talk. Social media is very challenging when it comes to looking at yourself in a positive light. People's lives look perfect. They've got the home, the husband, the wife, the car, the kids, the job, the clothes, the hair, all of these things that cause us to look at ourselves perhaps and think, well, how come I don't have that? Well, I work really hard. Well, I'm trying my best. So how come I don't have all that? But you know what? You probably have an awful lot of it. We're just conditioned to think that what other people have is better or more. So let's start with a little project. Let's do a little sticky note project. Grab yourself a pad of sticky notes and a pretty pen or marker and start writing down on each of those sticky notes something awesome about yourself, something that you love. Your hair, your sweater, that you have a cat, that you live in a great city, that you have food on your table every day that you work hard to provide for yourself. You can think of anything that is good and beautiful and wonderful in your life and write it on that sticky note. And then put those sticky notes around your house where you know you're going to see them. So take the one maybe that you need to work on the most and put it on a mirror. So when you look in that mirror, maybe your sticky note says, I really like my hair. 
it's a small thing, or I really like my smile, or I think that my eyes are twinkly, anything like that. And when you look in the mirror and then you see that sticky note, you're going to make that connection between what you thought about yourself when you wrote that and what you're seeing in the mirror. Love yourself and find ways to love yourself by starting with the sticky note project. Did you know that people who are optimistic have better coping skills? When you see things or when you try to see things or reframe things in a positive light, you have a better chance of being able to manage a situation than if you view it negatively or in a defeatist state of mind. The Buddha says that the mind is everything. What you think, you become. So what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? It's all about perspective and your perspective and how you see yourself and how you see yourself fitting into society, into life, into all of the things that are going on around us. And some of them we can't control, but that doesn't mean we can't control our thoughts. And we fall into these patterns in our life, habits, patterns, conditioning, things that were said to us when we were children and that we've carried through our life with us, and they're just stuck inside of us and have become part of who we are. So those things aren't going to necessarily change overnight, but maybe one sticky note at a time, you can make a change. Maybe you can change your thought patterns. One sticky note at a time. So I have five things for you to consider in changing your thought patterns and in building a more positive life around yourself. So thing number one, look at what you want to change. Pick one thing about yourself or your environment or whatever it is, one thing that you want to change your thinking about and start to reframe that thinking. Start working on that. It could be something as simple as the weather. When you look out the window in the morning and it's raining, instead of being doom and gloom and, and seeing it as a bad thing, find something good about it. In the spring, maybe it's that the plants are being watered and maybe it's that the earth is being cleaned or maybe it's that it's raining for the first time in weeks and weeks and that's what the earth needs. Find something or maybe it's that it's the day you're going to put your rubber boots on and go splash in the puddles like a little kid because that's fun, so why not? Change how you think about things, one thing at a time. And when you're done working on that one thing, Pick something else. They don't have to be big. They don't have to be huge monumental projects. Just little things that you notice about yourself and just start choosing and working. The next thing, thing number two, is to be the observer of yourself over the day. Do you find yourself thinking positively or thinking negatively? And What's sending you in that direction? Is it the people that you're with? Is it work? Is it frustration with traffic? Is it kids? Is it, I don't know what to make for supper? Is it, I never get time for myself? What is it that is sending you either into positive train of thought or negative train of thought? And just hold space for yourself to think about that and be the observer of your own mind. And then, Take it to the next step and see if you start to notice patterns. Are there things that come up repeatedly that you respond to in the same way every time? Just notice without judgment. Be your own observer of your own thought patterns. Number three, find the humor in things. I know, not everything is funny. I get that, really, I get that. Not everything is funny. But did you know that even just putting a little smile on your face sends messages to your brain that allows their cortisol to go down? Now, cortisol is our stress hormone. It's our fight or flight hormone. And a lot of us are living in fight or flight all of the time. We're stressed. We're anxious. We're just run down. We're running all over the place. And we never get to that place where we're calmer. So... 
our cortisol is firing all of the time. And when we send that little smile to our brain, it allows the cortisol just to come down enough, just a little bit, and maybe each time it'll come down a little more. And it allows the serotonin, that, that hormone that helps to build calm and happiness into our life, it allows it to go up. So a little smile and our cortisol comes down and our serotonin goes up and it can completely change how you're feeling with just a little smile. It's not a big thing. So try to find the humor in things. Maybe it'll generate a big belly laugh. Who knows? Maybe it's just something so silly and ridiculous that you can't help but laugh. And then notice how that makes you feel. Thing number four is to dedicate time in your day to living a healthier lifestyle. When we nourish our body with food and drinks that are healthy, we're nourishing ourselves and our brain. And that is a positive thing. We want our bodies to be strong and healthy because when they're strong and healthy, we can respond to situations with more um, perseverance or more resiliency or more courage or just that strength that we can dig deep inside of because our body is already and our brain is already in a good place. When we exercise, we increase the endorphins in our body and that helps us to feel positive and happy. So we can eat healthier to nourish ourselves and our brain and we can exercise to nourish the endorphins that help us to feel better and happier. And when we meditate or even just breathe, even just stopping and taking a few nice deep breaths helps us to find calm. So our whole overall person can become more positive when we nurture ourselves and we take care of ourselves and it doesn't have to be complicated it can start with little things, so go back to that pick one thing that you want to change and work on that. But notice that when you take time for yourself to eat healthy, to exercise, and to find some quiet time, just notice what it does in your body and how it makes you feel. And the last thing, number five, surround yourself with positive people. And that's not always easy because we don't always have control over who we are with. And just because someone isn't happy all the time doesn't mean that we shouldn't spend time with them. But we all know those people that when you get talking, they really go to the negative. And it's draining. It's exhausting to try and have a conversation with someone who always turns it around to be something negative. So try to reframe it. Try to slip a little positivity into the conversation and maybe just try very subtly even to help them see it in a more positive light. It's not always easy. It's not going to happen overnight. It can be a little bit of a process and it doesn't mean that you need to abandon people. It just need, means that you need to dig a little bit deeper into how you want to feel about yourself and create kind of kind of a little bubble around yourself and just allow that negativity to bounce off of you. Don't internalize it because what happens is when we start to internalize all those negative things that we're being bombarded with, that negative self-talk comes back, our feelings of um, self-confidence can be diminished because we can just kind of get chipped away at or we get sucked into the conversation and all of that work that we've done to try to be more positive and happier is kind of just chipped away at and sort of dissipates. So the message today, we don't have to be perfect and life is not all sunshine and lollipops, but it is always a good idea to try to reframe your thinking and find something positive that's happening in a situation because when you think more positively, you, you will feel better about yourself your brain will feel better, your hormones will feel better. There's just a whole chain reaction of awesomeness that can happen when you decide how you want to think and how you want to feel. So 
I hope that you've learned a little bit about positivity today. If you have any comments that you'd like to share with me, please feel free to email me at contact at thrivenutritionandyoga.ca. You can check out my website to learn a little bit more about me and why I am trying to build a positive and happy life. And you can follow me on Facebook at Thrive Nutrition and Yoga and on Instagram at Thrive Nutrition and Yoga. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and may you live your life to your fullest, follow your heart, and thrive in all you do.